OK, so we're going to solve this inequality, and our method involves looking at each of these different pieces individually, seeing where they're positive and negative. And this is really helpful because, let's say, for example, we find the top two terms are both positive and the bottom two terms are both negative. And this tells us for that specific value of x, we've got some positives divided by the product of two negatives. So this would tell us then that the overall fraction would be positive. So if we know when each of these individual pieces are positive and negative, this is going to tell us when the overall inequality is satisfied. So let's look at this first term. We've got x to the 4 minus 2. So when is this positive? When is this greater than 0? Well, you can see that this is equivalent to x to the 4 being greater than 2. And we could even draw a graph here of y equals x to the 4 minus 2. And we'll get that it's going to be positive, first of all, when x to the 4 is greater than 2. This is the same as having x is greater than the fourth root of 2 over on the right hand side, but then on the left hand side we can also have x is less than the negative of the fourth root of 2. So we've got our two parts of this inequality. First of all, x is greater than the fourth root of 2, and we've also got the negative part where x is less than the negative of the fourth root of 2. So we've got these are exactly when this first term is positive. So then let's look at sine x now. So for sine x, again we can draw a graph of y equals sine x just to help us visualise exactly when this is going to be positive and when it's going to be negative. So to solve when is sine x greater than 0, we've got first of all here between 0 and pi, so we can write this as x belongs to the interval between 0 and pi, and we've also got here from 2 pi up to 3 pi, so from 2 pi to 3 pi, and we also get some negative values, so from negative 2 pi back to negative pi, and we need a more succinct way of writing all of these. So we can actually spot here that our left endpoints are just all of our even multiples of pi, including negatives and zero. And our right endpoints are just all of the odd multiples of pi, again, including negatives. So we can write this as x is in the interval between, let's say, 2k pi and it's 2k plus 1 times pi, where k is just any positive or negative or zero integer. So this captures exactly where sine x is greater than zero. So now if we move on to our third term, x cubed, where is this positive? This one's nice and easy. We just get x cubed is positive exactly when x is positive. So we'll start just grouping off all of our different solution parts where each of these terms are positive. And finally we've got x squared minus 4. Where is this positive? Well, we could draw a graph of y equals x squared minus 4, and we get a very similar picture here for y equals x to the 4 minus 2, only we would have x squared needs to be bigger than 4, so we'd have x is bigger than 2 going off to the right, and we'd also have x is less than negative 2 going off to the left. So this happens exactly when x is greater than 2, and also where x is less than negative 2. So these are all of the regions where each of these individual pieces are positive. And what we'll do next is put these into a table where we can see where each of them are either positive, negative, and then this will tell us whether the overall fraction is positive or negative. So when we put all of this into a table, we're going to be interested in the sign of each of these functions between all of these, we call these our critical values, where the sign of each function changes. So our values that we're going to be interested in, if we just read them all off and then we'll put them in order in a sec, We've got the positive and negative of the fourth root of 2. Then we've also got all of the integer multiples of pi, so this including the odd and the even multiples of pi. So here k is just any integer. And we've also got the value 0, but this one's included here within our integer multiples of pi, so we don't need to write 0 again. And finally, we've also just got plus or minus 2. So if we put all of these into a table, now we'll be able to check when exactly are each of these individual terms positive and negative, and the impact of that for our overall fraction. So now we've got this table drawn out, we've got each of our critical values on the top. We're going to put positive or negative actually to either side of these critical values. So for example, when I put a plus here, this is saying that x to the 4 minus 2 is positive when x is less than negative 2 pi. We actually know that this is positive whenever x is less than the negative of the fourth root of 2. So we can put positive there, and we know that this is negative between the plus and minus of the fourth root of 2, and then it's positive whenever x is bigger than the 
fourth root of 2. So we can fill in some pluses here. And you'll spot that we've only gone up to 2 pi, and we've only gone down to negative 2 pi there. But because none of the other functions change sign, it'll be easy enough to extrapolate and work out what the pattern is at the end. So now going on to sine x, we know first of all that this is positive between 0 and pi, so we can put plus, plus, plus here. Then we know it's negative between pi and 2 pi, and then it goes positive between 2 pi and 3 pi, and so on. So this will keep alternating positive and negative. And then similarly going over to the left, we've got negative all the way down to negative 2 pi, then positive, then negative, then it will continue alternating over to the left there. And x cubed, this one's nice and easy, this is just negative whenever x is less than 0, and it's positive whenever x is greater than 0. So you can see that we've got all of these positives and negatives. And finally, x squared minus 4 we know is positive when x is less than negative 2, and also when x was greater than 2, and it's negative in between these values. So now that we've got all of the signs here, you can see first of all here where we've got two positives and two negatives, when we do the multiplications and divisions here, we're going to get a positive answer. But then here we've only got one negative term, so the two negatives won't cancel and we'll get a negative answer. Then here we've got two negatives, so we've got a positive. Here we've got three negatives, so this goes back to being negative. And then here between zero and negative the fourth root of two, the four negatives give us a positive answer. Then here, this one's quite interesting. We go across zero, but actually two of our signs change which means that it stays positive, then here we've got a negative answer, positive, negative, positive, and then this will continue going positive, negative, every pi units over to the left and similarly over to the right there. So now we can start to summarise our findings then. So if we start with this region between negative pi and pi, first of all, we've got that our original fraction is going to be positive when x is, we've got between negative pi and negative 2, this is positive, so in the interval from negative pi up to negative 2. Then we've also got here from negative the fourth root of 2 up to positive the fourth root of 2. So we've got negative fourth root of 2 up to the positive of the fourth root of 2. Then we also have this interval here going from 2 up to pi. So you see there's some nice symmetry about our intervals here, they're all symmetrical. And finally we need to capture what's going on to the left of negative 2 pi and also to the right of 2 pi here, so all of our remaining ones where none of the other three terms change, it's just sine x that changes sine there. So going over to the right first of all for our positive values of x, we're going to have between 2 pi and 3 pi, this is positive, then it'll be negative between 3 pi and 4 pi, then positive again between 4 pi and 5 pi. So we can capture this by having our positive multiples of pi, so 2k pi and then going up to 2k plus 1 pi. And here we're only interested in the positive ones, so this is where k is going to be an integer greater than or equal to 1. So we start with 2 pi to 3 pi, and so on. So this captures what's going on to the right, and then going off to the left into our negative values, we've got that our original fraction is positive between negative 3 pi and negative 2 pi, then it'll be negative between negative 4 pi and negative 3 pi, then it'll be positive again between negative 5 pi and negative 4 pi. So we want to have essentially a mirror image of these intervals here. So we'll be going from negative 2k plus 1 times pi up to negative 2k pi, where again k is an integer, but so that we only start with negative 3 pi up to negative 2 pi, we don't include anything we don't want there, we'd need to start with again k greater than or equal to 1. So we've now got each of these three intervals determine what happens between negative pi and positive pi, and then going off to the right, we've got all of these where it goes from an even multiple up to an odd multiple of pi to the right, where it's positive, and then these going from the odd multiple of pi up to an even multiple of pi to the left, where x is negative. So then we've solved our original inequality.